are looking at blue camas here, which is this gorgeous flower. So we can see that it's uh, terminally arranged on this spike. There's these pretty star-shaped flowers and they have these beautiful yellow anthers. And the anther is the pollen-containing part of the plant. And if you look at the leaves, we've got some narrow grass-like leaves that come out of a, a base here. And camas is in the lily family, so it grows out of a bulb. One fun thing about this flower is that it was a staple food of the native peoples in the Northwest. The bulb is edible, but before you get excited about foraging, let me discourage you here. There is a plant that looks very similar called death camas. And death camas is fatal, so you should probably not go try and find some and dig it up. And in addition to it possibly being confused with the fatal plant, a lot of its range has been greatly diminished from development and agriculture. So we want to leave it alone if we find it in the wild. But it used to be a really prevalent plant. When Lewis and Clark came through, they wrote in their journals about how they would see these seas of blue and there was so much camas growing that it would look like they were coming upon lakes, but it wasn't water, it was just flowers. Uh, but part of the reason that this plant was probably so prevalent was because the indigenous peoples were really encouraging its growth since it was such a good food crop. Uh, the Coast Salish around here would have these plots of camas that could be inherited through families. Um, but how they would cook it, so they would dig out the big bulbs and leave the smaller ones to grow, and then they would dig a pit in the ground and put some flat stones down and build a fire on it. And after this fire had burned down and heated up the stones, they would put their cakes of camas bulbs that they made on there and lay some grass or moss over it. And then they would pile the dirt back on and this would create a, an oven situation. So they would have to cook the camas bulbs for somewhere between 10 to 72 hours. And that's because the bulb is made out of a carbohydrate called inulin. And inulin is not digestible. Uh, the cooking converts it to fructose, which makes it sweet. But uh, another interesting part in the Lewis and Clark journals is they wrote about the extreme flatulence it gave them when they ate it. So it's a gorgeous flower, but it makes you fart. <laughs>